Welcome everyone, peace of Christ to all of you and hope everyone is doing good. Today we are going to continue with the Trinity series where we study the Bible, search the scriptures and use scripture to answer the objections to the doctrine of Trinity. Now, uh, we have answered a few objections to, to the doctrine of Trinity, but the very objection that we are focusing on right now is that the Old Testament does not teach that this argument that the Old Testament does not teach the doctrine of Trinity, which is obviously false, but we're not going to just say that. We're going to go through scripture. We're going to survey through the Old Testament and show and prove that the Old Testament, Old Testament does teach the doctrine of Trinity. Now, again, I'm repeating myself. I think the last two videos I repeated this statement that we can't just separate the Old Testament from the New. We have to take the totality of Scripture and see how Scripture in whole teaches us about any given topic, given topic in the sense that if it's the doctrine of Trinity or salvation, judgment, sin, um, atonement, and all of these things. If we want to know what scripture teaches us, we can't just take a few passages and just a few scriptures. We have to take the totality of scripture and how scripture teaches us that very doctrine or teaching. Now, having said that, the last two videos, to answer this objection, we have surveyed through the Old Testament in a few forms and a few angles and seeing how God uh, progressively reveals himself to us. Right? In the first video, I went through passages in relation to creation, how God created all of us, created the heavens and the earth and all the host within the heavens and the earth. Uh, we find that the Father was creating. The Father is a create, the, the creator. The Son as well is the creator, that all things around us, the, the heavens and the earth, was created by him and through him. Right? We also see the Holy Spirit giving life to creation. So we technically technically we see that the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit actively taking part in the in the in creating, right? All three of them were there from the beginning. From the beginning of time they were there and creating the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, co eternal, co equal, yet distinct in person, yet they are the one God, right? The next video, which is which was the last video, we went through scriptures in the sense of Abraham, like how God revealed himself to Abraham. And we find that even in that passages, we find God revealed, though we serve one God, I can't stress that enough that we do serve one God, only one God, yet he revealed himself in such a way that he is multi-personal. If you want to know more about that passage, please do go and uh, check out that video. I think I'll I'll put in the link into the description of this video. So you go and check it out. But in this video, we are going to go through passages in regard to Moses and how God reveals himself progressively to Moses. right? And we'll go through a few passages and you'll see, and we'll just see what happens, right? And, and we'll just study the scripture and, and and be honest with scripture and see how God reveals himself, right? So the first passage that I would like to go to, since we are speaking about Moses, what better way to start than the famous account of Moses and the burning bush, right? I believe that uh, all of us have heard this account. All of us have heard this story, right? In Exodus chapter 3, it says, verse 1, we'll start with verse 1 and 2. It says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back side of the desert and came to the mountain of God, to Horeb, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. So, just by these two verses, we find that, look, Moses was going to the mountain of God, 
and he came upon this angel of the lord again i'm going to say this again the angel uh the word angel simply means messenger right the hebrew word malak mess- just means messenger so the messenger of jehovah the angel of jehovah that the, that name in itself that title in itself if you want to call it a title that name in itself seems to be distincting that person from jehovah or the father all right so this angel of jehovah appeared unto him in a flame of fire somehow manifested in such a way that when moses saw he saw a flame of fire who is this angel of the lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire right inside this flame of fire out of the midst of a bush and he looked and behold the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed so it was not a normal fire right obviously so that this bush though it was in fire was not consumed now we continue reading in verse 4 it says in verse 3 as we continue reading in verse 3 it says and moses said i will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt now we want to know who is this angel of the lord that who appeared to moses yet in such a way that still did not burn the bush in verse 4 it says and when the lord saw that he turned aside to see God is the one who called unto him God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said Moses Moses and he said here am I and he said in verse 5 draw not nigh hither put off thy shoes from off thy feet for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground wow so as we seen in verse 1 and 2 that this angel of the lord appeared to moses manifesting in such a way that he is in this flame of fire uh, yet this burning bush did not was was not consumed by the fire and in verse 4 it says that this person this angel of the lord is called god yet being distinct from the father this angel is called god how is that even possible right we serve one god yet in the old testament scriptures in itself we see the glimpses of a multi personal god now we continue to read in verse 7 it says and the lord said i have surely seen the affliction of pardon me let, let's start from verse 6 right continue from verse 6 it says moreover he said the person who is speaking from the burning bush he said i am the god of thy father the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob and moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon god think about this moses wanted to look at this this sight this wonderful sight that this bush was burning yet not consumed and he saw this angel of the lord and now this angel of the lord spoke back to moses and said i am the god of thy father the father the god of abraham the god of isaac the god of jacob and now look at the reaction of moses he hid his face and he was afraid to look upon god in verse 7 it says and the lord said i have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in egypt and i've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for now, for i know their sorrows so just from this passage this was a time just before the exodus of israel from egypt and in this passage we see that this angel of the lord yet distinct from the father is also called lord and also called god and he is the god of abraham isaac and jacob we see this multipersonal god though we serve one god we see a more intricate a more deeper part of who god is right now go to go through another passage which is even more interesting in Exodus chapter 23 verse 20 right now again god is speaking here to moses and he says in verse 20 behold i meaning god right the father is speaking here and he's saying i send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which i have prepared take note god is sending this angel 
and this angel is going to go before thee he's going to make sure you are on track in the way okay this is the this is this is the point when they have left egypt right this angel of the lord is the one who's going to preserve you he is the one who's going to bring you forward he's the one who's going to protect you and he is the one who's going to bring you to the place where i god has prepared jehovah has prepared the father has prepared right so the father continues to to teach us who this angel is and gives us more attributes of this angel in verse 21 it says beware of him and obey his voice provoke him not for he will not pardon your transgressions for my name is in him now just in this one verse there's a lot of meat right here in regard to who this angel is first of all the father says look you you should beware of him take note of this angel all right beware of him fear him obey his voice do not provoke him and what is the reasons for all of this for not provoke him to obey to obey his voice what is the reason for all this because he has the authority to pardon your sins to pardon your transgressions to go even further than that the father says for my name is in him now this angel of the lord who who is this angel that he has the authority that was given by the father to pardon transgression to pardon sins and above all that the name of god is in him the name of the father is in him in this angel is that even possible right in verse 22 as we continue reading a few more verses it says but if thou shall indeed obey his voice and do all that i speak then i will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversary again it says if thou indeed obey his voice and do all that i speak so god is saying that you listen to me and to this angel you follow my voice and his voice right you can't go you can't go more detail than that that god is the father is simply distincting himself from this angel yet giving showing us that this angel has the authority of god himself right so who is this angel obviously is not mere creature because thus far we have seen that the father is giving him so much authority that no creature can hold and we will go through other passages to prove that In verse twenty three, he says, "For mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them out. Off, thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images." So this whole point is, uh, again, this passage is saying, "You will not serve other gods." you will not listen to other gods yet god is saying listen to this angel because i'm sending him and he will bring you to the place where i have provided for you and this angel is has the authority to pardon your transgression so obey him listen to him beware of him right and my name is in him that is a very powerful passage and we are going to exp- expound more on that we are going to unpack that little bit and see what that means right what does it mean when god says that my name is in him i believe that we can we can speak for hours on that there's a lot of things to unpack there but we are going to go through just two passages and see that now what is god's name right god reveals himself to moses as i am i am who i am the ever existing one i'm always existing the existing one right so if his name is in this angel who is this angel to possess the name of god to hold the name of god to have the name of god in him who is this angel right and would god and let's just ask this simple question would god share his name with any other creature would god share his name to a mere creature Let's go to Isaiah 42. <clears throat> In 
it says in Isaiah 42 verse 8, I am the Lord, I am Jehovah, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. So what God is saying is, I am Jehovah, that is my name, and I will never share my glory to another. Yet God shares, and yet God says that my name is in this angel. My name my name is in him. So obviously this angel is not a mere creature. But do take note that God says to obey him. This is something that that I'm going to come back to at the end of this video. And it's going to shed and it's going to shed more light to what's happening right here. And you'll see a fulfillment of this, right? So we have to obey this angel. Yeah, do not provoke him. He has the power to, the authority to pardon your transgression, to pardon your sins. And he's, in name of God, my name is in him. And yet in Isaiah 42, he says that God is never going to share his name, his glory with any other creature, mere creature. So, Obviously, just from that logic, this angel is not just an angelic angelic being. It's not mere creature. It's something else. And then we go to Isaiah, Isaiah 48, verse 11. It says, For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another again. In the same book, the book of Isaiah, again God says, I will not let any other people use my name and pollute my name. I will not share this glory. I will not give my glory to another. So that is clear. Though God will never share his glory, will never give his name or share his glory to another, share his name with any other creature, mere creature, yet God says that this angel, beware of him. Uh, do not provoke him, for my name is in him. Now, what about forgiving of sins? Who forgives sins, right? Who else forgives sins? Isn't it only God that forgives sins? You know, in Exodus chapter 34, verse 5 to 7, it says, And the Lord Jehovah descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord who descended, he is the one proclaiming the name of the Lord. In verse 6 it says, And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious and long-suffering, uh, gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy of th for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers, upon the children, upon the children's children, unto the third and to the fourth generation. So here we see another proclamation of who God is. He is merciful and He is gracious and He is the one who is forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yet He is a just God and He will bring judgment to the people who are guilty. Right? Now, as we have seen, in these passages from Exodus chapter 3, Exodus chapter 23, Exodus, uh, sorry, Isaiah 42, Isaiah 48, and Exodus 34, as I look upon my notes, right? Now, just by going through these passages, we find this angel of the Lord, just by the name itself, we find that he's distinct from the Father, uh, yet he possesses something that only a divine being can possess. The father says that listen to him, obey him. I'm repeating this so many times so that you may remember this. This angel of the Lord possesses the qualities and the authority of of only God can hold. You know, he has the power to pardon transgressions and all the name of God is in him. Now, I think I've said that enough. Now we'll go to another passage that speaks about something else now this is another passage that speaks about the time during the time of moses in numbers chapter 11 verse 25 it says 
And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took off the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. So they continued to prophesy. So just from this verse, we find that God came down in a cloud and took that spirit from him and put it onto the 70 elders of Israel, right? And the moment the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. They continued to prophesy. So what what is exactly prophecy? What is What does it mean to prophesy, right? Basically, prophesying means someone who is given a revelation and to say something that is not from their own mind, but from God. They are saying something that they would never have been able to say a knowledge of something, a knowledge of something to happen in the future, uh, a, a knowledge that is beyond the capability of human. Yet they speak of this because they were given that knowledge by God. Basically, God putting his words into the mouth of men. That's basically it. So, when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. So, how is it possible that this Spirit, being distinct from the Lord, because the Lord took that Spirit and put upon, uh, put that Spirit upon them, and they started to prophesy? Meaning, that Spirit must have the ability to have that same knowledge of God, so that that Spirit would give that knowledge to the people, the 70 elders, so that they may speak those words, so they may prophesy, right? So what is this spirit that is being spoken here in verse 25, in chapter Numbers 11, 25, that is giving that ability to people to speak th- words that only God knows, only God knows. This is the knowledge of God, yet they, sp- they can speak. So, Who is this spirit? What is this spirit? I know some people would say that this spirit is just a force of God. God's force or God's power. An impersonal force that's being used by God to fulfill his will. But how can just an impersonal force have knowledge of what the father has? Being distinct from the father, yet this spirit has that knowledge of the father. Knows the mind of the father. And yet gives the, that ability to the people to speak. Gives that words of the Father to the people to speak. So that words that came out of the people are not from their own mind, but from the mind of God. Yet this spirit knows the mind of God. How can a mere power or mere force know the mind of God? Now, we are going to continue reading in verse 29 it says and moses said unto him envious thou for my sake would would god that all the lord's people were prophets and that the lord would put his spirit upon them so now we get a clearer picture that all of them were able to prophesy because it was god who put his spirit so whose spirit is this it's god's spirit so it was God's spirit that gave them the ability to prophesy. It was the God's spirit that gave them the words that was of God's. It was not of their own mind, but of God's. That's why it's called prophecy. Because by their own by their own knowledge, they would never be able to speak those words because these words are coming from God. And that spirit was giving them the, the words to speak you know, I'm trying my best to explain this and I hope I hope this is not confusing you and we'll continue reading in, in another passage about this in Isaiah 63 maybe this will help to understand this better in Isaiah chapter 63 verse verse 9 uh, verse 9 12 it says in all their affliction he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them. Again, this angel, we keep seeing this character in the Old Testament. This angel of the presence of God, the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He bare them 
and carried them all the days of old but they rebelled and vexed his holy spirit therefore he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them wow so look the spirit of god that we saw in uh, in numbers 11 25 and 29 numbers chapter 11 was 25 and 29 we find that that spirit of god if that spirit of god is just mere impersonal force then how is it possible that we can grieve his spirit in isaiah 63 it plainly says the holy spirit grieving his holy spirit vexed his holy spirit how is it possible a mere impersonal force be grieved be grieved right the only way this holy spirit the spirit of god being distinct from the father be able to be grieved is that he is not just an impersonal force but a person of the god here that is the only way that we can ex- explain this being distinct from the father yet being one as god right so just recapping that we find that the holy spirit has the mind of god knows the mind of the father and able to give that words of the father to the people so that they may prophesy because the words that they speak the prof- the prophesying the words that they speak is not from their own mind and from the mind of god and yet the holy spirit knew the mind of god knew the mind of the father yet took the words and gave that ability to them to speak these words right now here we see that the holy spirit can also be grieved the people grieved them they rebelled against the holy spirit and they grieved the holy spirit that in itself shows that the holy spirit is not just an impersonal force but the holy spirit itself has a mind and feelings he can be grieved you can rebel against how can you rebel against an impersonal force it's impossible right and, and, and just as we read the next two verses it says then he remembered the days of old moses and his people saying where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock where is he that put his holy spirit within him again distincting god the father and the holy spirit that led them by the right hand of moses with his glorious arm dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name there's so much more to unpack here but i'm going to keep this video short and i'm going to move on and i'm going to recap first before going to the last passage and from there we'll i hope we'll have a fuller picture of what's going on so just from these passages as i just read the notes that i have uh we were speaking about the angel of the lord and the spirit of god right the angel of the lord and the holy spirit we read through exodus chapter 3 exodus chapter 23 isaiah uh, in exodus 3 and exodus 23 we find that this angel of the lord is not mere angel and remember this god says that you have to obey him listen to him beware of him do not provoke him for he has the power to pardon your transgressions pardon your sins and my name is in him right now in then we went on to read in isaiah 42 and 48 and it says that god will never share his name and shall never share his glory with another in in exodus 34 we find that it's god who forgives iniquity right and then in numbers 11 and isaiah 60, 63 as we just read we find that the holy spirit yet being distinct from the father and the angel of the lord here in the terms of the old testament the angel of the lord being distinct from the angel and the father he can gives the ability for people to prophesy and how is he how is this holy spirit able to give that power or give that gift of prophesying to the people only when the holy spirit have the knowledge of the father of knowing the words of the father so that he may give that words to the people so that they may speak the words of god and prophesy because when they prophesy they are not prophesying of their own knowledge or of their own mind but of the mind of god and then we also see that the holy spirit is grieved and people rebelled against him 
speaking of the holy spirit not just as an impersonal force but a person a person in the godhead yet being distinct from the father and the son and of course in this case we are speaking the angel of the lord and and i'm going to come there so who is this angel of the lord so far we see that this angel of the lord is given the authority as he is as if he is a divine being and not mere creature now we are going to another passage now we are going to go to the new testament and from the new and that's why i say that we have to read scripture in totality so that we can understand what scripture teaches us now we go to the new testament to give us the fullness of what's going on now in matthew chapter 17 Let's just read the first five verses, and it says, "And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart." Picture this again. Try to imagine this. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, and brought them to a high mountain. Right? Moses was on a mountain when Je when God. told him about this angel of the lord now jesus takes these three people up the mountain now see what happens and verse 2 and was transfigured jesus was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light and behold there appeared unto them moses and elias elias meaning elijah i'm reading the king james version and this is how they say the name elijah So Moses and Elijah talking with him. Wow, so again, as we read earlier, Moses experienced God on a mountain, saw the angel of the Lord. God said to Moses, "Listen to him." And Moses was there. Here again, Jesus on the mountain brought Peter, James and John, and Moses appeared to transfigured jesus being transfigured and moses appearing now and elijah now there is more there to unpack please do go and read the book of kings i believe it's is it first kings 17 or second kings 17 it in the book of kings if you just go and read the book of kings on elijah elijah as well met an angel of the lord on a mountain so it's very significant here right why moses and elijah was here then it says in verse 4 then answered peter and said unto jesus lord it is good for us to be here if thou will let us make here three tabernacles one for thee one for moses and one for elijah the and peter being excited as he always is he seems to equate jesus with moses and Elijah in in the way he says that let's make a tabernacle for each one of you but look at what God says while he yet speak behold a bright cloud overshadowed them right even in the old testament it speaks of God coming down in a cloud right again in verse 5 in the new testament it says while he spake before behold a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud which said This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear ye him and when the disciples heard it they fell on their face and were so afraid wow so that same uh, that same dialogue that God told Moses listen to that angel beware of him do not provoke him now god is telling to the disciples when they were in the midst of deciding to to build this tabernacle for one for jesus and for elijah and for moses and in some sense they were trying to equate jesus to to elijah and moses now god comes the father comes and and intervenes and says this is my beloved son i am pleased with him hear him listen to him obey him and that's what the passage says so now we see in the old in the new testament we see a fulfillment of the picture of the old testament 
right in the old testament we see moses on a, uh, on the mount in on the mountain saw god saw the angel of the lord and seeing god who god who told them told moses listen to him obey him and give and he has uh, the authority to pardon sins right listen to him and yet here now jesus on the mountain transfigured moses is also there elijah is also there now the disciples saw them saw that saw that glorious thing that they are, they are seeing right now and god inter- intervenes that that thought that they had and says listen to this this is my beloved son so we see a fullness of of what's happening right here from the old testament to the new testament and in the sense of the name how is jesus the one who has the fullness of the father in colossians 1:19 it says for it is for it pleased the father that in him should all fullness dwell for it pleased the father that in him meaning jesus should all fullness dwell so the fullness of the deity the fullness of the father is in the son so we see the distinction between the father the son yet they are one in being so the distinction between the father the son and the holy spirit yet all three are co-eternal co-equal yet distinct but all three of them are one being called god jehovah so i think that's enough for in for this video we have gone through passages uh, throughout this video in the angle of moses and how god was progressively revealing himself to moses and we find that this angel of the lord is not mere angel it's not a mere creature but he is the son who was manifesting in such a way in the old testament to the people to moses to abraham to all the the patriarchs right so we see from the very beginning from the old testament itself we see this the father son and the holy spirit always existing from eternity right they were always existed they were there during the creation they are the one who created right the father son and holy spirit in creation the father son and holy spirit with abraham moses and the next video we are going to see in the angle of david and see how god used david and god and how god revealed himself to david and that's going to be really interesting so i hope this video was a blessing i hope it it is a kind of a long video i hope this was helpful i'm not sure how many of you made it to the end of this video but i hope this was helpful i hope this would be a great blessing to all of you please do uh study these passages there's more meat there that i can go into but it is going to make this video really long but i pray that you continue to read this uh share this video do share it with your friends and family and hope that you are edified and blessed with this content with that uh love god with all your heart mind soul and strength and god bless till we meet again god bless